Welcome, it's a playoff edition of Mark's Madness. Joined as always by Mark Miller, I'm Matt Finkel. I'm pumped up. Week yeah, 11 is yeah. coming up. The playoffs are set. We had to get through a snowy, rainy, I don't know, windy week <laughs> yeah, 10, but we made yeah. it through. And now we're into the postseason, and I can't wait. I know you're excited. Uh, we've been looking forward to it for weeks, talking about who we thought might get in. Well, now we know. We know the matchups. We know the locations. This is, this is the funnest time of year. So you said 224 yeah, teams in yeah, the postseason. That's what yeah. you just told Seven me. Seven divisions, 36 teams in each division. That division one is divided into two regions instead of four like everybody else. But there's still 36 per division, seven divisions, 224 teams. Uh, I counted up there are 37 undefeated teams. They're 10-0. They think this is, the, this is the magical year. They're going all the way to the state championship. But all 37 can't do that. Can be seven state champions. That's we'll right. have. We've got 24 local teams in the playoffs. That's awesome. Every local. year we get a bunch, but 24 is a bundle this year. And of course, it's weighted heavy towards the smaller division because we're so strong around here in the small schools. Well, one of the schools in the bigger divisions, Division Two, I'm a mm -hmm. senior. Yep. In the playoffs, completing mm -hmm. the turnaround, finishing mm -hmm. eight and two, and they will get the four seed and get mm -hmm. a home game. Host Harrison. What do, what yeah. do you think the Spartans need to do to get a victory? Well, they need to score points. That's their moniker, you know, and play some defense. They can't, you know, you don't want to lose 80 to 75, although we've seen some scores pretty close to that. Averaged 47.4 points a game. That's more than anybody else in our region by, a, by quite a stretch. Harrison, a couple hour drive on the bus. They're from way southwest in Ohio. Uh, hopefully the bus ride won't settle well with them. They'll get up here and Lima Senior hang a bunch of points on them. Well, as we heard on our bracket show on Sunday, Mike Fell and the Spartans are thrilled to be able to get the opportunity to play a home game at Spartan Stadium. You know, back when Lima Senior was in the playoffs before, you didn't host. You know, it was always at a neutral site. So this is the first home playoff game. We're excited about it. We'd love the fans to come out and watch. I'm super excited to be in the playoffs first and foremost. Sure. I'm playing a team like Harrison. I've watched them like before. So um, they're a really good team. They have a nice quarterback. Uh, I've watched them play against Oak Hills this year. Okay and I'm just ready to play against. I bet you are. Week 11, you've got to be ready to play, and very excited for that game this coming week. And for the whole Lima area, it's, it's a very exciting time. Yeah, it, it's been a while, and to get a home game uh, in Coach Fell's second year, the players are pumped. They'll be ready. Cincinnati LaSalle is the one seed in this region. That's mm -hmm. who the Spartans could meet in Week 12. That would be a regional mm -hmm. semifinal. But first, yeah. they're going to focus on Harrison. That's right. One week at a time, and it's not, not hard to do because you don't know who the next one is. On that schedule, you know who's week one through ten. But after that, one game at a time is an easy one. Right. you got to win yours. That's right. Well, speaking of one seeds, Wapakoneta, mm -hmm. a one seed in the, in the area. And mm -hmm. Division three, they're region ten. They'll take on Oxford Talawanda yeah. in week 11. Yeah. And they've won five straight Talawanda, but mm -hmm. Wapak, they've won 10 straight. So Yeah, yeah, they're really good. And they're, they're all about defense. You know, over the course of the year, they've given up 59 points, 5.9 a game. That's less than a touchdown a game. That defense is really, really solid. And they play, face some pretty good offenses this year. And the thing that they've got to like about their region is, number two is Bell Fountain. They played in the opener and beat them soundly. So they got to figure, hey, we've improved. Even if Bell Fountain's improved, we get to that point we can move on. That's got to make them feel good knowing <laughs> that they've already beaten the two seed. Right. But Coach Travis Moyer, he also visited us mm -hmm. on our bracket show, and, and he said that he's excited to be playing some better competition in the postseason. He's excited by that challenge. We know at this point of the year we're going to see great teams and great players, and obviously Talawanda fits that profile. And uh, it's going to be a, a huge challenge for us this week. Uh, offensively, they like to run the ball. They've got a tailback. That's probably one of the premier players in the state. And uh, so it's going to be a huge challenge for our defense. But our defense has played exceptionally well all year. Defense has played very well all yeah. season. Mm -hmm. Five shutouts, including weeks nine and ten against Kenton and Van Wert. They're really rolling, have the ball rolling here as we hit week 11. That's right, and that'll keep you in any game if you keep the other team down, especially these bad weather games. Last, last Friday got everybody prepared. We're going to get a few more of those before the state championship, and that defense will keep them in the game. So let's go to Division 4 now, Region mm -hmm. 12. We've got one local team. It's Kenton. They're the four seed. Get a home game against Port Clinton. And remember the mm -hmm. Wildcats? They've won eight straight yeah. after starting 0-2. And, yeah. you know, those two losses, Coldwater and Wapakoneta, two teams yeah. in the postseason, obviously. Yeah, two so. really good teams that could make a lot of noise in the playoffs. Kenton has improved. They had a lot of young players, some new people making the decisions. But Coach Fackler has those guys playing. They are a dangerous, dangerous team. Port Clinton, they're coming down off the lake. This will not be a good trip for Port Clinton. I think Kenton at home is going to roll. 
Well, so far we haven't had any of our local teams have to talk about going on the road just yet, and that's going to continue as we yeah. move to Division mm -hmm. 5, Region 16. Mm -hmm. Liberty Benton is the two seed, perfect regular season, and Blanchard Valley Division, Blanchard Division champions of that's the right. BVC. Yep. They will host Delta, and meanwhile, defending champs in Division 5, mm -hmm. Coldwater, they're the four seed. They get Chippewa at home. Yeah, and you talk about defense that's playing well. Three shutouts in a row for Chip Otten's crew down there and 18 straight playoffs. I mean, th this is just, uh, this is expected. You know, the season's not over at Coldwater. You know, a lot of people thought the regular season ended and now we go into playoffs. This is part of the season at Coldwater. And uh, two-time defending champs, man, they're, you know, they, they've had shutouts in five of their ten games. You know, now the one loss they had, they got shut out. So there's still a zero up there. It's on the wrong side of the ledger, but right. they're ready to play. Yeah, since that loss to Marion Local, the three straight shutouts, and, and Chip Otten really likes the momentum his team carries into the postseason. The best thing that right now is that, that we've had three, uh, three good solid, uh, we've had three shutouts in a row, and, um, you know, we're really healthy. So our, so our kids are feeling good. They got out of the last, really the last three games, got uh, out of the game in the second half, and, and so we're really healthy, uh, feeling good. Uh, our seniors have done a good job uh, leading us, and I think they're excited to, to try to make this run at uh, – Run to the run to the uh, finals. Coldwater could meet Liberty Benton in the regional finals. That would be yeah. a fun one. That would be a lot of fun for this area. Yep, two good teams, and uh, they're going to have to play somebody really, really good a lot in the postseason here. So now let's go to Division Six. But before we get there, as you know, here on Mark's Madness, we usually break down a play, and there is a great play in the mm -hmm. Van Buren Pandora Gilboa game. Mm -hmm. That game was so important for yeah. postseason and for the BVC yeah. title. And take us through this play, Mark. Well, just a drop back pass, this, and you find the running back over the middle. The linebacker got a little nosy, stepped up in there, completed the ball, eight off to eight off, 85 yards, and he just outran those safeties, took it right down the middle for a big guy. Here you're going to see it. There's no blocking. There's no moves. He's just running a, a little arc route in the middle of the field there over top the linebacker, bobbled a little bit. Now, look at these two red shirts. You'd think they got a chance to make the tackle? Uh-uh, speed. That is Ross Adolph from Riley Adolph and a big play in that game. Huge play, and it, it actually was the go-ahead score at the time, as you see. We were scoreless in the second, and Van Buren went on to shut out the Rockets, and a huge win earned them the Valley Division title of yep. the BVC, yep. and most importantly, it got them into the playoffs as we take a look at the bracket in Region 20. So many local teams, in fact, seven in this wow. region, and Van Buren as the seventh seed will take on LCC at ONU on Friday night. We're going to come back to that in a minute. Let's just mm -hmm. finish out. Who else is where? Wayne Trace is the eight seed. They draw top seeded Tenora. And what a four five matchup. Crestview hosts Spencerville, <laughs> a rematch of week eight, of course. That's right. And finally, those NWC champs, Delphus Jefferson, matches up with the three seed, Bucyrus Winford. Mm -hmm. Just quickly, Delphus Jefferson, big win over Spencerville in the NWC title game on Saturday night. Well, they proved them that they can win a big game because that was as big as it gets. I mean, you got play. At that point, it, they weren't assured even winning and getting all those points from Spencerville if they were going to get into playoffs. But they knew the, the league championship was on the line, and they went out and they won it. And that means, hey, this is another big game. We we know we can do it. A lot of confidence over there with the Jeff Caps. Yeah, great win in Week 10, right? giving them great momentum yep. for Week 11. Back to LCC Van Buren. This is such an interesting matchup for a lot of reasons. It will be played at ONU on Friday night. That's because Lima Senior will have Spartan Field. Mm -hmm. And there was some talk about whether maybe moving this to Saturday. Mm -hmm. what, all that is behind us now. We know it's mm -hmm. going to be played Friday night at ONU. You'll have the call. Well, I'm really looking forward to it. That is a beautiful facility. I'm a Division Three football guy, so I've been in a lot of games over there. They got the turf. They got the lights. It's going to be a great night, and it's just down the road for LCC. Not really a home game, but on turf, they'll call it a home game. Both of these teams are very excited to have the opportunity to be playing postseason football. It feels great. I'm really excited for our seniors especially, uh, but the whole group, the whole community is really excited. Um, getting pats on the back all weekend, but we're ready to get back to work and uh, go out and show them what we can do in week 11. I'm really proud of our kids. We've, we've uh, really improved from week 1 to uh, week 10, and we're very fortunate enough to get to participate in week 11, which is a, a real thrill, a real honor no matter how many years you're, you're there in a row. You know, only 32 teams in each, each division get that opportunity to compete in week 11, and you know, we're really excited to have that chance. And remember, when we visited Van Buren at the warm-up, that was mm -hmm. at ONU. That's yeah. where they had their team yeah. camp. So how about that, working out that they get a, a game there in Week 11 at the place where they trained all August? And I'm sure they'll use that to their advantage. You know, we're going back where it all started. And, and remember, the coach that time said, we want to win the league. We want to go to the playoffs. Well, here they are. So let's see what they can do with it. They were able to do it. Yeah. 
Crestview, Spencerville. Wow, what a matchup for week 11. And mentioned week 8 that Spencerville lost to yeah. Crestview. After being up 21-0. Yeah. A long, you know, Preston Zaleski goes 68 yards, and then that two-point conversion. Right. He didn't really know what he was going to do with it. Kind of threw it up in the air, and his guy caught it. Dramatic loss for Spencerville. Back to the scene of the crime at Crestview. Let's see what happens this time. You know, it's hard to beat a quality team twice in a very short period of time. So you almost have to think Spencerville may have an advantage going back into Crestview. That's a great point. And head coach John Zerby has been clear that he's going to use that week eight and watch a lot of tape from that week eight to make those adjustments and be ready for the postseason matchup. In that kind of game, you have to play four quarters, and uh, you know we played three and a half decent quarters. We got to play four quarters. We also know that you know some of the strengths of their team, and we thought we knew it, but um, you know, and they know the strengths of our team. So I think you're going to see similar game plans, but at the same time, um, a real physical game once again. It's going to be it's going to be a great environment for a first round playoff game. Going to be a lot of fun on Friday night. So what's yeah. the most interesting matchup in this region? Well, you know, uh, the most interesting matchup is the rematch, Spencerville-Crestview for me. Um, but, you know, Tenor is sitting out there, the number one seed, and they are really good. And they've been good for several years. They are playoff tested. And uh, if they can get by Wayne Trace, and they already beat them in the regular season week eight pretty soundly, uh, they're going to be the team to beat in that region. Although, you look at the Northwest Conference and how strong it was in those three teams, Crestview, Spencerville, Jefferson, they've been beating up on each other. Now maybe if they go play Tenora, they're strong enough to beat up on them. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Northwest Conference had a great year. Sure so did, did the MAC, And the MAC was rewarded with six teams <laughs> into the postseason. We're going to get to a couple of them, but let's take a look at Division Six, Region 22 now. Minster mm -hmm. is the three seed. The Cats will host Mechanicsburg mm -hmm. on Friday. And Versailles qualifies as a seven seed, draws number two Miami East. If they both win, they could yeah. meet in the regional semis, yeah. which would be really interesting considering that Minster defeated Versailles 34-19 uh -huh. in Week 5. Yeah, anytime you get a league rematch. I mean, it usually happens in, in Week 11. But week 12, because the MAC is so good, yeah. it, it could happen too. That would be, that'd be a good one. We hope that happens. The two locals win. they got to play each other. Let's go to Division 7 now. More local teams. Like you said Bunch. at the top, we're, we're loaded at the uh, smaller divisions, and it's mm -hmm. great. Division 7, Region 24, we've got four BBC teams in this region. Mm -hmm. Arlington is the one seed. They will host Delphus St. John's. Macomb mm -hmm. at home against Toledo Christian. We could get a rematch of Arlington Macomb, maybe. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We'll see. Looking a little far ahead there, maybe. Lipsick travels to Tiffin Calvert, and then a great 3 6 matchup Grove against Pandora Gilboa. Yeah. Lots yeah. of great games in this uh, that Pandora Gilboa Grove game. That's a rematch of week one, and their backdoor rivals, and that was the one that the punt snap went out of, out of, over the punter's head and out of the end zone. Dramatic, dramatic win week one. Come back week 11, play it again. Uh, Delphi St. John's, you know, four and six. That tells you a little bit about strength of schedule in that MAC conference. The only team in the whole tournament with a losing record. There's four teams at five and five. They're the only four and six in. And remember that the Blue Jays defeated Arlington. They ended the Red Devils yeah. season last year. So yeah. you know Coach Leonard isn't taking them lightly. Oh, not at all. A very familiar opponent. And unfortunately, we haven't fared very well against this opponent. And uh, um, they're really good. There's, there's no doubt about that, and they're really uh, coached really well. They play in a really good league, and that's a bunch of really goods that, uh, you know, we can't take anything for granted. They're, they're still, um, still the regional champs, and they're going to be that way until someone can knock them out. That's right. Until somebody takes care of you mm -hmm. and you were last year's regional champs, that's how they're approaching this game, and you got to like that attitude right. for Arlington. Yes, you do. It's the same way with the defending champs, and almost all of them got back in. Division Two Loveland didn't get back in, but until they're out of the tournament, they are the state champs. So let's finish with Division 7, Region 26. We've got three local teams hosting playoff games in this region. Mm -hmm. One of the big stories is five-seed Fort Recovery. They'll go on the road to Fort Lormie. Mm -hmm. Marion Local's the one seed. They'll take on Triad. Lehman Catholic gets the two. They'll host Covington. Let's start with the matchup of the Forts. And mm -hmm. Fort Recovery, this is their first ever mm -hmm. postseason appearance in program history. Really yeah. great time for the Indians. Th this could be a really good matchup. Four and fives typically are. I get to call this one as well with Mark Schein. We're looking forward to it. Fort Recovery lost two of their last three games. They're in the MAC. Has that schedule prepared them better than the schedule Fort Loramie played? But I think it's going to be a really good game. That's a very interesting question. But either way, head coach Brent Camp is just thrilled to be able to make some history for the Fort Recovery football team this year. It's pretty amazing. Um, it's been neat to see the uh, outpouring of support from the community. And uh, it's just uh, it's a great feeling to get over that hump and uh, for these kids to have a chance to play uh, one more week of football. 
So from a postseason newcomer to <laughs> a postseason mainstay, uh -huh. Marion Local, they've yeah. been there. They're always there. They're the one seed, yeah. ten and zero, MAC champs. I think they got a 33. Is it 33 game regular season? I'm not sure. That sounds about right. Yeah, it could yeah. be. It's around there. It's yeah. in the 30s, yeah. Yeah. and they're just they're just always you know you know where to find them. That's and now right. they've drawn Triad, who they defeated yeah. last year. Yeah, going for their fourth state championship in a row. You talk about Coldwater and Marion Local almost in the same breath. They're in the playoffs and have so many state championships in recent time. But the thing that impresses me, again, you look at the high numbers they put up offensively, but they're very good defensively too. 35.5 point differential. That means they're beating the other teams by 35 and a half points. And Tim Goodwin does not run the score up. Those, those starters come out of there pretty quick. And so what would it be if he'd, he'd try to run it? Would it be a 50-point difference? You know, they're phenomenal. They're really, really good. And a lot of people say, oh, you can't win four in a row. Yeah. Until oh. they lose, <laughs> yeah. they're, Until they're they there. lose, they're the champs. <laughs> and if right. anybody's got a good chance at it, you got to like. Yes, they do. And like, they're healthy. They're healthy. Yeah. And remember, this, so they defeated Triad 50 to nothing last mm -hmm. year in the playoffs. But they said, talking to Coach Goodwin, he said they were a little banged up. You can't really go on by that. Mm -hmm. But I also asked Coach Goodwin, I asked him, What's the secret? Yeah. I, you know, we all so want to know. Everybody wants to know. How do you win so much? So here's yeah. what he had to say. Take a listen. Having good players for one, you know, having good families for two, um, you know, and everything's got to be in place with a lot of good coaches, and you know, just it's just you can't really summarize it. You know, uh, some years it all comes together. Well, it's been coming together quite a lot for Tim Goodwin and company, and they've got to be the favorite coming out of Division Seven, Region Twenty Six. Tim is a very humble guy, but he is a great high school football coach, and he's made it happen down there. Well, now that the playoff picture is set, hope you're able to keep track. We've got a lot of area teams to keep an eye on, so let's let you know when you can watch our full-length games that we'll be bringing to you. We've got seven on the schedule, and it's going to get started with Spencerville Crestview. You can see that one Saturday at 10 a.m. on WTLW. Also at 10 a.m. on WOSN, we'll have Van Buren LCC. That's where you'll be. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Mechanicsburg Minster Saturday evening at 7 p.m. on WOSN. Harrison Lima Senior Saturday 9 p.m. on WOSN. So gonna definitely want to check out that Spartans home game in week 11. That's right, find them, they're great games. And then we've got three more for you on Sunday. PG Grove, that big rematch from week one, that'll be Sunday at 10 a.m. on WOSN. And then a doubleheader at seven begins with Delta St. John's Arlington followed by Fort Recovery Fort Worth. So plenty of action. Hope you enjoy it. Get out to those games on Friday and Saturday and then come back to your couch and watch them re-air here on the West Ohio Sports Network. Thanks for your help, Mark. As always, a lot of fun breaking yep. it all down. That's going to do it for this edition of Mark's Madness. We'll see you next time on WOSN.